Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Whatever time it is when you hear this message, I pray that your mind, your heart, and your spirit are all poised to receive, to accept, and to respond to words of wisdom. Hashem. I want you to ask yourself a real question. Why aren't you where you really want to be in life? Why aren't you where you really want to be in life? Why haven't you accomplished either the kinds of goals or attain the sort of lifestyle that you know to be possible for yourself. Um, now, immediately, uh, the average-minded person is going to start telling their story, right? And you're going to start talking about what happened. Maybe somebody betrayed you. Maybe you were denied certain opportunities early in life. Maybe you had certain kinds of trauma or um, adverse conditions that you experienced. And these are all legitimate, you know, influences on a person's life. Uh, I don't want to dismiss them as irrelevant, but I want to really encourage you to consider the fact that you know, those the things that happen in your life, there's something that Carl Jung said that I really love to this effect. He says, I am not what happened to me. I am what I chose to respond to what happened. Right? Because you are not your thoughts. You're not your feelings. You're not your words. You're not your actions. You are not your habits. You are the one that chooses your thoughts, your feelings, your your words, your actions, and your habits. The real you is the chooser. Right? And so what happens the the real problem the reason why you're not where you really want to be in life is because of your choices uh, you are choosing to live in quicksand right you are choosing to live in quicksand what do i mean by choosing to live in quicksand um let me tell you uh, most people are are like me because I chose to live on quicksand myself for so long. Um, I, I knew I had uh, certain natural gifts and talents. Uh, let's say centered around communication. I knew I could speak and be understood. I, I knew that I could write and be understood. I knew that I could conjure images in my mind and I could render them in drawing or painting or in clay and and it be recognizable right and for so long i would downplay uh, these abilities or i would take them for granted or i i would try to you know generalize them and say that everybody has these abilities or, or everybody could do this if they just practice this way or that way you know and and it was in, in many ways this um, false humility, if you will, um, of not wanting to seem arrogant or, or presumptuous about what I could do. But at a certain point, I started to realize, and one of the turning points was when I was in grad school, to be honest with you, I had a, a, a lab, you know, we had a counseling lab and I had a client and um, I was, I think this guy was my first client actually. And I'm count, I'm counseling him and you know, we have the two way mirror and the, uh, my professor, uh, Dr. Phil was his name, uh, matter of fact. Uh, Dr. Phil, you know, when I came out of my session, you, you know, the other students give you feedback and it's a lot like Ifa actually, where the young, or the, the, the students will tell you feedback you did well with this you did you may have you let him off the hook with that you should have really pressed him on this and dr phil uh, listened to everybody's feedback and then he just told me one thing he says you know you have a, um, a much deeper level of communication that's available to you that you know and he was talking he's gesturing from here there's a warmth from your from your heart that you're not you're not emanating to him and 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 that's what you need to do that that's where you're going to have a breakthrough and 
I I was surprised that he communicated with me that way, that he told me that. But I took it to heart. And in the next session, I did. I really started to get deeper into, into my heart and to really communicate to him. And not only in words, but energetically, right? And it... We did have breakthrough, you know, in, in, in that session, in every session afterwards, um, it, it really had a, a profound impact. Uh, and from that moment on, I, I started to appreciate and respect my natural gifts and talents a little bit more. That wasn't, you know, the slam dunk and everything shifted for me. It took me years and years and years to continue the process of, of self-acceptance. Uh, and 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 taking responsibility for my natural gifts and talents, but I want to tell you as I did, one of the most profound impacts was that, as opposed to feeling, you know, I was afraid that I would become arrogant or big-headed. But what really started to happen was that I started to become more at home within myself. I, I started to have a deeper sense of belonging within my own being. Right. And that had a really profound impact on uh, my comfort level and my ability to really show up and deliver. Now, there's a second way that that I would say that sense of belonging, first of all, that got me out of the quicksand that that allowed me to stand on solid rock that allowed me to have a, what they say in Spanish, firmeza, you know, a firm, a firmness of like rock. Not walking on quicksand anymore. I'm standing on rock of my own identity, right? And the second thing that allowed me to move and to go forward uh, and to progress and to transcend and triumph over difficulties and adversity, triumph over 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 fortune, over opportunity, you know, because success is also uh, can be um, detrimental, right? Uh, was really getting clear about who I serve. Right. A lot of people who I work with, when, when I ask them who they serve, they're so noncommittal. Oh, yeah, I could be a doctor or I could be a ballerina or I could be a nurse or I could be an astronaut or I could be, you know, and, and it's just like I could be all things to everybody. I could serve women and I could serve children and I could serve black people and I could serve white people and I could serve executives and I could serve gardeners. You know, I could just be all these things. You know, and I had that same disease, you know, that's quicksand. That's quicksand. I I could envision myself everywhere from California to Nairobi, from Chile to Canada. I could I was all I could be all things to all people. Let me tell it. That's quicksand. Right. Because you can't craft a message that's clear when you're just talking to everybody. If you're talking to everybody, you're talking to nobody. Right. So get clear. Don't worry about talking to every single person. Talk to the people who, you know, are going to receive your message. Talk to the people who need your message. Talk to the people who come to you for the message. Really get clear about who. Wait a minute. Who really is coming to me and saying, please tell me, show me, demonstrate for me, lead me this way. I need your input and your insight. I need your perspective. Who are those people? Accept them. Those are your people. And start crafting your message, your work, your contribution. Start really getting deliberate about claiming responsibility for serving those people or that person. It might, it, you know, some people serve thousands and thousands and thousands, and some people serve just one. Just one. You might serve one who serves thousands, though. Right. But get clear about who it is you serve. Go there and give your natural gifts and talents to that person or to that group of people or to that cause with reckless abandon. Give your service, serve fully. That is your rock. That's your granite. That's your mountain of stone, right? And I'm going to tell you, if you refuse or as long as you refuse to accept your natural gifts and talents and face the people you serve, you're going to be making decisions like a person who's thrashing around in quicksand. All of your decisions, no matter how altruistic you may think they are, all they're doing 
<clears throat> it's helping you sink deeper and deeper and deeper into chaos. And you, you may be up to your neck right now, right? Some people I know are going to be up to their neck right now when you're hearing this. Don't think that it just means you have to sink. There's no hope for you. It just means that you got to be really patient and you got to relax and you got to surrender and you got to recognize that you have a specific set of natural gifts and talents and you serve a specific person or you serve a specific group or you serve a specific cause. Put everything else out of your mind. Focus exclusively on your natural gifts and talents and who you serve. Nothing else matters. Nothing else exists. Focus. Give your complete and absolute loyalty and attention to those two things. And I'm going to tell you that not only will you have solid ground to stand on, but you will have joy. You will be able to face all of the difficulties of gradually being pulled out of the, the quicksand. You're going to be able to see all of those things are going to have more meaning to you. They're going to make more sense to you. They're going to validate for you what your natural gifts and talents can actually do for you. They're going to verify for you that you have a unique destiny and that destiny must be fulfilled. And that destiny has the capacity to bridge any kind of situation. It can take you from anywhere you are to anywhere you are meant to be. If you will rely upon it. Right. And so everything that I do is based on this mission of my own to help you discover your natural gifts and talents, discover who you serve and master those things. So when you go to the blog, when you go to the videos, when you go to the books, when you go to the school and you enroll in the classes, everything that I do is designed with this inside out approach because I know that I have lived it and I have worked with thousands and thousands of people and I've seen how they've lived it and the results are always the same. Everyone who applies the teachings gets the same kinds of results, okay? So I wanna invite you to prove me out, prove, test what I'm telling you, right? Test what I'm what I'm telling you. Visit orishalifestyle.com or obafemio.com and get involved, okay? Get involved. Don't just look at the things that I'm offering. Actually apply them, right? Look at the videos. There's lessons in every video. Apply them. Look at the blog. Read an entry. There are lessons in every blog. Apply them. Try it and see what happens, right? I guarantee you that if you apply the lessons, you will get the desired outcome bit by bit, step by step. Your life will be transformed. You will live the medicine that will heal your life and heal the lives of those who you are destined to serve. I look forward to talking to you soon. Bye for now. Odabo.